introduction to exercise 13a, we're looking at the basics of uh, probability, specifically sample spaces and probabilities. So here there's a couple of terminologies that we should make sure we know. So for example, sample space, exactly as the name implies, and you guys have already seen this before, hopefully. It's the list of all possible outcomes as elements of a set represented in specific notation. And the specific notation I'm talking about is using this E. Out of curiosity, does anyone know what that E is? is called thank you very much epsilon uh it's epsilon equals and then we use the curly brackets and list each of the op uh, the possibilities out in commas separating an event is a subset of the sample space uh, we need to make sure we know the union and intersection and the difference between them so union is represented by i'm just going to blow your minds a u and intersection is represented by an upside down u now, the key thing is that we need to know the difference between union and intersection. At this stage, I'm hoping you guys have either done this or remember from previous years, but union, we know, is all values that exist in either, whereas intersection is the values that exist in both, explicitly both. The addition rule is given by this, where we have the probability, and this is the proper terminology that I'm expecting you guys right off the bat to be able to use. The probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. But remember, remember, assuming they're not mutually exclusive and they do overlap at some stage, the probability of A plus the probability of B, we have to take away the middle part where they overlap, otherwise we're counting it both, or counting it twice, sorry. So we go minus probability of A intersecting with B. Mutually exclusive is a term that you'll hear, you'll hear sorry, quite often both in everyday life, I feel I use it quite often, uh, and in these math questions, mutually exclusive just means two events that don't overlap in any sense. That's it. Uh, we use Venn diagrams and Carnot maps. We use, we're going to use both of them in one example below, uh, but we need to make sure we know how to use both, because in an exam, they're not going to say, use any method, they, or they might, but there's also a very decent chance to say, specifically, use a Carnot map, or use a um, Venn diagram. Okay, so find the sample space, super easy. Uh, we're looking at, uh, can we determine what the sample space when three coins are tossed? Well, first thing first I want to look at is, well, how many options or possibilities should there be? If I ask you, flip a coin once, what, how many possibilities are there? Two. Two. If I told you to flip a coin twice, how do you calculate how many possibilities there are? Four, how do you know it's four? Two times two, two, times two sure. So if there's two coins, then it's four, uh, four possibilities. If it's one coin, it's two. What's three coins going to yield? Is it six because it's going up by two? One, how do you know it's not six? What is it actually? Eight, good. I'm seeing some sad faces already. Uh, so if you imagine a tree diagram, right? If you draw the first coin, it splits off this way. Draw the second coin, flip, it splits off like this. And the third coin will split off like this. Okay? And you end up with a tree diagram with eight opportunities, in the, uh, eight possibilities on the end. Or in other words, it's just two to the power of how many coins you have. So two to the power of one coin is two. Two to the power of 15 coins is, I'm not going to do that in my head, but you get the point. Right? So we should have eight values. So sample space. Epsilon equals to heads, 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 tails. I'm going to try and keep some sort of order to this. Heads, tails, he heads, tails, heads, heads. What am I missing? T tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails. How many do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Tails, 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 seven. And what am I missing? Tails, heads, tails. That's what I'm missing, right? Okay, lovely. And we have eight done. I know I can stop there. Uh, it seems redundant for me to mention. Please remember to use epsilon and the curly brackets. That's a really dumb place to lose marks on. Kind of maps. Uh, I'm going to ask as a class whether you guys would like me to go through this question. Can you put your hand up if you'd like me to go through this question? Great. I'm going to go through it very quickly. Again, if you have any questions, let me know afterwards. So in this situation, we've got 500 people questioning classified according to age and whether or not they regularly use social media. The results are shown in the table here. So we can see on the right, bottom right, I like to see that's the total of how many people were questioned. I double check, double check with the stem of the question. Great, 500. I haven't missed anything. 
And then in each column, this column represents the people under 25. This one represents people over or equal to 25. And of course, the rows represents regular use of social media. So find the probability that the person regularly uses social media. So of course, the probability we know from all the probability stuff we've done in, pre in previous years is that it's just the number of outcomes divided by the total number of uh, possibilities, right? So in this situation, regularly uses social media. It doesn't say anything about age. So we're going to focus purely on yes or no. In this case, we're focusing on yes, 300. Why is that wrong? Good. Probability, not number of people, right? So the probability will be over the total, which is 500, which you can write as 3 over 5, or 0 0.6. Both are valid. The person is less than 25 years of age. Same situation, less than 25. I'm going to focus on this number there, 240. So we have number 240 over 500 equals to 24 over 50, which is the same as 12 over 25. Or we can simplify to 0 0.48. Not simplify, sorry, convert. Finally, the person is less than 25 years of age and does not regularly use social media. Normally, if you're not given this table, you'd have to do uh, use certain formulas. But we're given the table, just use it. So it says the person is less than 25, so that's this, this column there. And does not, so that's this row here, where their overlap would be the 40. And therefore, we write 40 over 500, which simplifies to... 2 over 25, or 0 0.08. Great. Let's move on to the next page. I'm assuming you guys are finding this pretty straightforward. Though I am keeping in consideration that we did skip over probability last year. Or well, the majority of it. A <clears throat> uh, classic probability question. Uh, in this situation, we've got a, a box or a dartboard uh, where each side is 2 meters long. Uh, and it's containing a blue, I know it's black and white on yours, but a blue one quarter of a circular disc centered at the bottom left vertex of the square. And if a dart is thrown, it's equally likely to hit, you guys have already heard this drill before, equally likely to hit any part of the dartboard. And we need to find the probability of it hitting the blue. Just like we did before, we just need to find the area of the blue divided by the total, and that gives us a probability. So quickly to find the area of, I'm going to draw a square instead of writing square. Uh, of course, we know it's 2 times 2, which gives us 4. Super easy. 4 centimeters squared. The area of the, not semicircle, sorry, the quarter circle. I'm going to try my best to draw a quarter circle. There we go. Is equal to our form, which is pi r squared. But of course, because it's a quarter, I'm going to write times it by a quarter. Thank you very much. Pi times r, r in this case being 2 squared. Because we're imagining that the radius is 2 and the whole thing would have a diameter of 4. Which gives us, well, 4 times a quarter is 1, so just pi. And therefore, the probability, and if you wanted to write in proper notation, you could write probability of, oops, that's not it, probability of hitting blue equals pi over 4. There we go. Any questions? Okay, uh, we'll go through one more example and then we'll go through the content for exercise 13b in a separate one. Uh, Simone visits the dentist every six months for a checkup. Uh, the probability that she'll need her teeth cleaned is 0.35, the probability that she'll need a filling is 0.1, and the probability that she'll need both is 0.05. So this person, um, doesn't brush her teeth properly is what I'm get, gathering. So we have to use a kind of map or a Venn diagram. I'm going to use both, right? Because I'm going to use both to show how to do it either way. I'm trying to condense everything that we should have learned in the last few years. Let's start with Venn diagram. A key part of the Venn diagram, of course, is these circles. And the part that the students always forget is the box on the outside, so don't forget that. Another thing that students always forget is to write their definitions, just like you do with your polynomials, whatever it is, please write let blah 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 equal blah blah blah. 
So I'm going to write let what's the first one? Cleaning. So we'll do let C equal to cleaning teeth. I'll just write cleaning. They get the idea. And then write F equals filling. Cleaning and filling F. So I go at C, F, and then I see what my values are. Uh, probability is a very uh, comprehension heavy topic, so make sure you read through the question and pick up any information that's important. Uh, the first bit of information, visit the dentist and every six months, is that important? No, no one cares. Uh, the probability that she gets her teeth cleaned is 0.35. Now, where on my Venn diagram is that? So if I was to shade it in, where on the Venn diagram would teeth cleaning being 0.35 being be? Yeah? Is it just this area? No, it's also all of this. That's 0.35. Now, with this stage, I don't like writing the number 0 0.35 because then I might mistake myself down the line and think, oh, it's only that portion without the middle being 0 0.35. So I'm going to skip forward and look at the other information. The probability that she will need a filling is 0 0.1. Same idea. I don't like it because it's, it's, it's not got all the information available. So I'm going to skip forward to the last bit of information and say the probability that she will need both is 0 0.05. In that case, I can write the number 0 0.05 here. And then I can say, well, if the filling is in total 0 0.1 and the chances of both is 0 0.05, well, it makes sense that this is 0 0.05 as well because they should add together to give me the 0 0.1 that's mentioned in the question. Same thing applies for the clean. So 0 0.35 in total, which makes sense that this one is 0 0.3. Am I happy? Am I done with this Venn diagram? Why not? Good, absolutely. The whole, well, in terms of probability, everything should add up to one. It would make sense. But in this case, it doesn't. If you were added up 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.4, which means that this area has to be 0 0.6. So that's the error in the outer that says no cleaning, no filling. Any questions? Okay. Am I speaking too quickly? All right. Uh, let's do the Carnoff map. So the Carnoff map is defined by our key features, which is we write C and C dash. C dash meaning, what's the word for it? Starts with C. Not the opposite, but the, not quite. Keely, if you say something really nice to Daniel, what are you, what are you giving him? Okay. Compliment. So we call it C compliment or compliment of C. So F and F dash here. Uh, we should also note that their totals are available. You don't have to write total. You can if you want, but you don't have to. All right. And then we draw our little three by three table. Hopefully yours is a bit nicer than mine. Okay. What number should go in the bottom right? One. one. Very good. The total of everything should be one. The And then we fill in the bits of information. I'm, one, I'm not going to use a Venn diagram because I'm assuming I'm not doing the Venn diagram and just taking information from the question. The probability that she will need both is 0 0.05, which means that in the top left corner is 0 0.05. The probability that she will need her teeth cleaned is 0 0.35 in total. So that's this total row being clean, 0 0.35, and then the filling, 0 0.1, should go on the bottom. And then it's like a really weird Sudoku. So you just say, okay, well, 0 0.05 plus something is 0 0.1, so therefore it should be 0 0.05. 0 0.05 plus something is 0 0.35, that should be 0 0.3. Look in the bottom row, 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.1 plus something should give us 1, 0 0.9. Looking in the right-hand side column, 0 0.35 plus something should give us 1, 0 0.65. And finally, in the middle, 0 0.6. And I like to just double check. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6 does indeed give me 0 0.9, and the same thing works horizontally. If it doesn't work either way, you've done something wrong. <clears throat> Great, that's the heavy lifting done. Let's look at the questions below. What is the probability that she will not need her teeth clean, in other words, C dash, but will need a filling? So if it says 
teeth clean, sorry, not teeth cleaned and needs a filling, is that intersection or union? Sorry? Intersection. intersection. Thank you very much because we're saying and needs a filling, not all needs a filling, and needs a filling. So I'm going to write the probability of teeth cleaning, not teeth cleaning, sorry, which is C dash, intersecting with F, which is, and I can either look in whichever one I want to, in this case, on the left hand side, uh, not cleaning teeth, but still being in F, is going to be this one right here. This is the only other color I had, sorry. Uh, and on the right hand side, if you use a kind of map, C dash is the second row intersecting with F, which is the first column, ends up with 0 0.05, same answer. 0.05. What is the probability that she will not need either of the treatments? Of course, we know that means PR of C dash intersecting with F dash, which gives us an answer of, and if we go back up, remember we were at 0.6 on the outside of the two circles because they're not included in C and F, therefore that would be 0.6. Any questions?